I want to look at some different notations for differentiation, but before I do that, I need an example to work with. So here's my example. Let's look at the function f of x equals 5x squared plus 3, and I'm going to calculate the derivative of this function. So to calculate the derivative of this function, I need to write the expression for the derivative f prime of x, and I'm going to do that using the formula that has the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Okay, so let's plug in for all of these things. So this is the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h. That's going to be 5 of x plus h squared plus 3. And then all of that minus f of x, which is just 5x squared plus 3. And then all of this will be over h. Okay, and let's simplify that numerator a bit here. So this is the limit as h approaches 0 of. And so I have 5 times, and I'm going to multiply this out. So I get x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. That's from squaring this out. Plus 3 minus 5x squared minus 3. And remember to distribute that minus sign across both terms. And then all of this is over h. And I see some stuff that's going to cancel here. I'm going to have a 5x squared and a minus 5x squared, and I have a plus 3 and a minus 3. So when I cancel that stuff out, then I have the limit as h approaches 0 of, and this is going to be 5 times 2. That's going to give me 10xh plus 5 5h squared, and then on the bottom I just have an h, and now I can cancel out some h's here, so this is going to be the limit as h approaches 0 of, and this h is going to cancel out, and one of these h's is going to cancel with the h in the denominator, so I'm going to have 10x plus 5h, and now I can let h go to 0, I can actually take the limit, and I'm left with 10x, so I see that f prime of x is 10x. That's my derivative function. So now using this example, let's look at some different notations for differentiation. So first we're going to look at notation for the derivative of a function. And I'm going to look at the general notation, and then I'm going to use my specific example. So if I have y equaling f of x, my specific example is f of x equals 5x squared plus 3. And we just saw that the derivative function f prime of x was 10x. So you've already seen this notation, y prime equals f prime of x. So a specific example, f prime of x here is 10x. We could also write it as y prime equals dy dx. And dy dx equals 10x is the specific example. So this is called Leibniz notation. And right now, don't think of it as a ratio. Just think of dy dx as being the same thing as y prime. It's just notation y prime equals df dx is another way to say the same thing. So df dx would equal 10x is our specific example. And lastly, I could write the f of x out separately here. So I can write as d dx of f of x, or I can write it d dx of 5x squared plus 3 is 10x. Now here's some notation for differentiation operators. So the general notation and the specific example are what we'll look at again. And again, we'll have y equals f of x, and then f of x equals 5x squared plus 3 is our specific example. So we already saw this general notation. This d dx here can be considered a differential operator. It's acting on a function. And we already saw the specific example for this. Now, another way to simplify it is just to write it with a capital D. And we call that the differentiation operator. It's operating on the function f of x. So the differentiation operator acting on 5x squared plus 3 would produce 10x. Sometimes you want to specify that x is the thing that we're uh, taking the derivative with respect to. So we can write a little x there. When you can see the specific example then just looks very similar, except we have a little x for our d there as a subscript. Finally, I want to look at notation for the derivative evaluated at a point. And so again, we'll have the general and specific, and y equals f of x, and f of x equals 5x squared plus 3. So f 
prime of A is how we had been uh, denoting the derivative at a point, but we can use the Leibniz notation and write that as dy dx evaluated at x equals A. So 10x we saw was the derivative, so I can say 10x evaluated at x equals A is 10A. We're just plugging the A in everywhere we see an x. We can also write it using a, instead of a bar, we can kind of use a bracket here, one end of a bracket. You might see that in some textbooks, and so that behaves very similarly. Now, we've been using x and y here, but we don't have to use x and y. If we happen to have other variables involved, then we would just use those variables. So for example, suppose that the displacement function for a particle is given by s of t equaling the square root of 2t plus 1 plus 2. Find ds dt evaluated at t equals 2 and explain its meaning. Okay, so in order to find ds dt, I'm really just finding the derivative of this displacement function. And so to find ds dt, ds dt is, and I can use that same formula that I had before, and I'll use uh, h again, I'll let h go to 0 of s of and then I have t plus h minus s of t all over h. Okay, and so now I'm doing the limit here as h approaches 0, and this is just very similar to what we did before, except the letters are a little bit different. All right, s of t plus h, that's going to be the square root of 2 times t plus h plus 1, all under the square root plus 2, and then this whole thing here is going to be uh, minus the square root of 2t plus 1 plus 2, okay, and then all of this is over h. All right, and so this is going to be the limit as h approaches 0 of, and what can I do up here? Well, uh, I'm going to have, let's see, a plus 2 here and a minus 2 here when I distribute that minus sign. So those are going to go away. I don't have to worry about those. So I'm just going to have this square root minus this square root, and then I have an h here. So let's uh, rewrite that part. So I have the square root of 2t plus h plus 1. And then uh, let's see, what do I have next? I'm going to have a minus. I was going to write the plus 2, but I don't have it there. I just have the minus now, the square root of 2t plus 1. And then all of this over h. And when we have a situation like this with square roots, we know the tactic normally is to multiply by something that looks like this. We'll take 2 of t plus h plus 1. And instead of a minus here, I'm going to put a plus, the square root of 2t plus 1. And then I have to do the same thing in the denominator. So I'm just going to rewrite this. 2 times t plus h plus 1. And square root of 2t plus 1. Okay, so what happens now when I do this? So I have the limit as h approaches 0 of. So the denominator I'm going to not do anything with. I'm just going to leave this as h times this whole thing. But the numerator I'm going to multiply out. So the first terms will multiply together and get rid of the square root. So I'm going to have 2 times t plus h plus 1. And then I'm going to have the cross term of this times this and this times this. I think the cross terms will go away if you look at it uh, because I'll have a, one with a plus sign and one with a minus sign. And then the last term, I have a minus here and a plus here. So that's going to be a minus overall. And then it's going to be 2t plus 1 and 2t plus 1, but the square root will go away. So it'll just be minus 2t plus 1. And then this whole thing here is going to be h times this whole denominator here. I'm not going to do anything with it. I'm just going to leave it exactly like it is. 2t plus h plus 1 under the square root plus the square root of 2t plus 1. Okay. So this equals the limit as h approaches 0 of. And I have a 2t plus a 2h here. Well, the 2t here and the 2t here will go away. And then I have a plus 1 and a minus 1. Those are going to go away. So I just have a 2h on top, but a 2h and an h down here, those h's are going to cancel, so I really just have 2 on top. 
And then on the bottom, I have this thing right here. So it's the square root of 2t plus h plus 1. And then I have plus the square root of 2t plus 1. Great. Now what? Uh, I can actually take the limit now. I can let h go to 0 here. So I'm going to get uh, 2t plus 1 plus 2t plus 1. That's going to be 2 times 2t plus 1. Uh, but then that 2 will cancel with the 2 up top. So I'll have a 1 up here, and I'll have a square root of 2t plus 1 down here. And that is ds dt. Now what about ds dt evaluated at t equals 2? So what that means is I'm going to take this expression that I just got. I'm going to plug in 2 for t. So it's going to be 2 times 2 plus 1. And then I have the 1 on top. And so this is the square root of 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5. So it's going to be a 5 down here and a 1 on top. So what is this giving me? Well, this actually, if you uh, remember, dstt is going to give me the velocity function. And so this is telling me the velocity of the particle at time t equals 2.